Right, welcome to this tactics and showcase video for the Wraith Knight for the Eldar Crafts Worlds. So I've been working on uh, a new list for the Eldar. It's perhaps the most iconic uh, army on the channel. It was there right at the start. Uh, it's the channel's named Striking Scorpion 82. And so uh, Eldar have been a major focal point. They have been struggling in 8th edition. And so um, I proposed a new list. That's over on the Plus channel. Uh, a lot of contributions being added in on that. Uh, and then I've been putting a new list together. One of the key units I do plan to have, I know some people are not so keen on it, but that is the Wraith Knight. It's a beautiful model, and we're going to talk about it in this video. Uh, so rules, uh, tactics, ways of helping to keep it alive, I think is quite crucial as well. And then uh, different configurations. There's a number of options available for this thing, and so we'll talk about the different options that are available, and then maybe I'll roll up some dice a bit later on uh, to give you an idea of uh, how this thing can work. In combat. So I think the Wraith Knight was more feared in, in 7th edition. In 8th edition it's struggled, uh, but still I still rate it, I still think it's really good. So here he is, if you've been following along on Instagram, I'm on Instagram now, uh, and you get sneak peeks and uh, update pictures and so on, you'll see that I have uh, been painting up a different configuration. Usually it's the Sun Cannon and Scatter Shield, but here you can see it's the two Wraith Cannons at this model is now armed with here. So, very cool. So he's magnetised. Uh, so, magnetised on the arms. Just here, just some magnets inside. A uh, good place to get magnets is just from eBay, that's where I usually get them from. And then, uh, that's that arm with that weapon. Uh, the heavy wraith cannon. Then on this side, uh, magnetised here. And then, I'll just bring in the other bits. So I used to go for sun cannon scatter shield. Just here. Um, so that works by taking off taking off this arm here. That's simply replaced by the scatter shield like so. And then this one, I cut the barrel off like so. That's the uh, Wraith Cannon and then I can replace it with the Sun Cannon option. And that's just about strong enough to hold that there straight as a larger weapon like so. So I'm quite happy with how that's come out. I magnetise the head so that can turn. That goes on, and I magnetise the torso as well, and that's just it's a strong magnet in there, you can see the size of it, just buried inside there, and then this usually comes as a dome, uh, this end bit I cut it off flat, and then super glued uh, the magnets on just there, and that just goes like so. So, it's a fantastic model, and it means I can do different poses with the weapons, he can look different ways, and he can turn different ways as well. And it all adds up to so many different combinations that are available uh, for this thing. So really happy uh, with the options that are available. I'll zoom in here so you can take a look at the base here. So there's the work on the base. I took a bit more effort on this one, so some spare tyranny bits. And then just some uh, parts from Imperial vehicles, Space Marine vehicles, and so on. So you can tell it's in the City of the Guard. Uh, I've been fighting against the Tyrians and the Neldar in the sector as well. So these are all just spare bits that you get with your Tyranny kits. There's a bolter just there. Different items. All built up. I, I usually try and make a bit of effort for a larger model to do some kind of diorama on the base. I think it's worth doing. It looks great. Just sets the model off nicely. So if you like the look of the model, uh, the colour scheme, which I'm really happy with how it's come out, this alien sort of turquoisey colour and then the, again it's alien kind of metal here with the bronze and the black and the white and then the, the sword here is a transfer just on the regular Eldar transfer sheet um, just there. So if you like the way that looks, there's a full painting tutorial for the Eldar on the channel here I'll show you how to paint some of the wraith blades uh, but the process here is exactly the same so if you want to achieve these kind of results just follow that painting tutorial along that's in the painting tutorial section on the channel here and again a couple of sword transfers in there uh, these I think are from the vehicle transfer sheet for the Eldar uh, so just regular transfers that you can use for that but iconic model a major focal, focal point for my Eldar army uh, but we'll take a look at the rules now uh, for the Wraith Knight different configurations you can go for and later on I'll go into things like uh, stratagems and other things that can help tactics and so on uh, so you can get the most out of this model in your Eldar Force. 
So we'll take a look at him now in the updated and new codex for the Eldar. So the, the twin Wraith Cannon is actually a cheaper option that I've gone for. Uh, he is a lot in points. He's going to, he's a 2,000 point army. He's going to be a quarter of your points here. Uh, so just look up the points first of all. So Wraith Knights, 402 points. So he is a lot. He's a lot of points. Uh, and the argument is that you can get, for that amount of points, you can get better stuff. And it, it's true. Uh, it, it is true. But uh, I think there's some enhancements to try and get the most out of him. Uh, possible, both for the damage that he can do and then also durability is an issue as well. So, add uh, the heavy wraith cannons is what I've gone for. They're 50 points each, so you've got to pay for that twice. So, that gives you a total of 502 points for the configuration that I have at the moment. Uh, you can then add other weapons on top of that on the shoulders. I don't usually, but it's an option you can go for as well. Uh, the sun cannon and scatter shield. So, uh, the scatter shield's 20 points, and then the sun cannon is 118 points. So, I just can't see the, the we'll look at the stats a bit later, but I see a lot more value in the, rave can, in the rave, heavy rave cannons. Problem is, is if you go with heavy rave cannons, you lose your 5 plus inbound saves, a bit less protected. Uh, there is the option of the sword as well, so that's the uh, scatter shield at 20 points. And then uh, the sword as well, the Titanic Ghost Glaive, which is 30 points. That's a lot more of a cheaper option. Looking at 450 points, one of them. Uh, but primarily that's going to be for charging at your opponent uh, in close combat and so on. But we'll, we'll look at all the options here. So it'll be the last entry here. Very for night. So 27 power points or power level. Then uh, is the damage chart here, strength 8, toughness 8, toughness 8 is a great bit of protection for him, that's really good, St you know, strength 7 weaponry is going to need 5s to win, which is really helpful. He's got 24 wounds, which is a, a pile of wounds, it's the same as an Imperial Knight, it's loads of wounds to try and get through uh, if you're going to try and destroy him. He's got 4 attacks, which is okay, leadership 9, and then a 3 up save. So I, the stat line is fantastic for him. Uh, so remaining wounds between 13 and 24, as movement 12, so it's nice and quick. Weapon skill, ballistic skill 3 plus. Then it drops down 7 to 12 wounds remaining. It's 10 inch move, which is still quick. 4 up, weapon skill and ballistic skill. And then between 1 and 6 wounds. So it's, it goes down by half, and then down to a quarter. You drop to 8 inches, which is still okay. And then uh, 5 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill. So... The heavy wraith cannons up here first of all, that's the standard loadout, and it's sort of the medium points cost, but I, I think it's really good. Heavy wraith cannons, range 36, so the, it's not the most fantastic range, but it's a decent range, it's okay, and you can move 12, so you can get into that range pretty quick. Assault 2, so you've got two of them, so you actually get four shots here, and this is the incredible thing, strength 16, that's pretty rare you get that, uh, strength 16, minus 4, and d6 damage. What I really like about this is when you get your hits, usually at twos to wound, the vast majority of targets, like a land raider, you'd be on twos to wound a land raider, or twos to wound an imperial knight, it's very very powerful when it comes to wounding with those rave cannons. Uh, and then minus four on the save as well, so your average tank on a free up save is just not going to get any kind of save at all when these things wound. So I, I really rate them as weapons, I think they're absolutely deadly. So accuracy is an issue on freeze to hit, it becomes worse if you've taken damage, but we'll, we'll cover that a bit later, what you can do. Uh, so you may replace the heavy wraith cannons with a titanic ghost glaive and scatter shield, that's the cheaper option, uh, or a sun cannon and scatter shield. So I was running the sun cannon, which is here, remember it's 118 points, range 48, it's better range, heavy 2d6, so it was okay, you sort of, on average you're getting about 6, 7, shots with that. Then it's strength 6, minus 3, and 2 damage. So often what's happened in games with him when I had the sun cannon is my I wasn't killing enough armour and what I was ending up doing was firing the, the sun cannon at tanks. Now it's okay but the, the big issue that I had was the strength of the weapon. It's strength 6 so you can be on 5s to win most vehicles and I was trying to do that Minus three and then just two damage. 
It was alright, but I ended up firing at tanks and causing two, four wounds, and it wasn't that big a, uh, an impact. So then you think, well, I should fire at infantry. So you end up firing at infantry, killing space marines and so on. But then why would you pay 500 points? Or well over 500 points for that configuration just to kill a couple of space marines a turn. And so I, I, I thought I need real tank busting capability. And uh, I was paying out too much in points. So the heavy wraith cans, you know, four shots, strength 16, minus four D6 damage. If you hit well, wound well, you'll kill a tank uh, in a turn. And that I think is nasty enough. Now, the other option is if you go for real close combat. So the Titanic Ghost Glaive is times two strength, so that again fights at strength 16. So again, two to wound the vast majority of stuff. It's minus four on the save, and it's six, a flat six damage, so it is horrific. The only, one of the downsides I see to it is that you only get four attacks, you get four swipes, and if you roll badly enough you could miss with a load and end up not doing too much. Uh, but if you roll average, slightly above average, you should be able to kill a tank. You know, four attacks, threes to hit, you should hit with three, two or three, and then you should wound, and then the wounds just come straight through at minus four, so yeah, it's deadly enough. And, I saw, another reason why it's, I haven't gone for that option is that you do get Titanic Wraithbone Fists to fight with anyway. Yep. So these fists here on the model, even if you've got the shooting configuration, they still come in at strength 8, strength of the user. They come in at minus 3 and they're d6 damage, so you've still got a nasty bit of close combat ability with them. There's a second close combat ability as well, Titanic Feet, so you choose uh, to fight with that. Um, so strength of the user, which is strength 8, minus 2 and d3 damage, and you make 3 hit rolls for every attack made of this weapon. So you end up with 12 attacks in total if you're trying to deal with hordes, you know, marine, space marines and gene stealers and all that kind of, um, you know, multiple model units. So I, there's plenty of good options available for Wraith Knight. They're all pretty good, but I think the most efficient to get that balance between firepower which is that firepower is deadly. The games I've used this configuration has been excellent. And then, uh, but still with some combat capability with the feet and the fists, then uh, I think that's the best option to go for, is the heavy wraith cannons. You, you may disagree, uh, experienced LDR players, by all means leave your own configurations here as well. Um, now, you can also take two items from the following. You can mount those up on the shoulders, two more weapons. Scatter lasers, which I don't see much point, in doing, uh, range 36 heavy, 4 strength 6, no minus on the AP and only 1 damage, it's sort of a very low impact weapon, so I usually bother with that. Um, you can go for shuriken cannons, again quite low impact, 3 shots of them, strength 6, you can get your shuriken damage, but I don't bother with that one. Uh, and then the star cannon would be the, the best, uh, heavy 2, so if you've got two of them, then that's going to be four shots. Strength six, minus three, and D3 damage. It's not bad. Range 36 is good. And I think they're 15 points a time. Yeah, so I, I would say that's the better option. With 15 points, there's some nasty firepower. And you can fire that off at trying to pick up more wounds against vehicles, because it's decent enough. Uh, or if you need to kill marines and monsters and so on, it's a good weapon for them as well. So if I was to take... If I had the spare points, I'd pay 30 points and take double star cannon. No problem at all. So as Ancient Doom, the scatter shield gives you the 5 plus invun save. And then there's catastrophic collapse. It's not good if you're nearby and you roll that 6 when it explodes result. And then there's some great rolls here, Unstoppable Revenant. A Wraith Knight can fall back in the movement phase and still shoot and or charge during its turn. Uh, so that's brilliant. You can just pull away from combat and still be free to uh, do as you want. That's very, very flexible. It's really good tactically. When a knight, Wraith Knight falls back, it can even move over infantry models, though at the end of its move it must be more than an inch from all enemy units. So you can actually go over the top of enemy units as well. So, brilliant. Really good. In addition, a Wraith Knight can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering the penalty to its hit rolls. Now, if that penalty was there, I would seriously consider not having the knight, but it ignores that. So that 3 plus to hit is going to remain even if you move, and that's very, very helpful. 
Finally, Ray Flight only gains a bonus to its save in cover if at least half the model is obscured from the fire. So it's quite hard to hide this thing, but there's times when you will get cover available for him. So that's the configuration that he has. So to enhance, and the issue is just, is a fire magnet, he's going to get shot at, and the configuration that I have here is that there's no inbound safe to protect him. So, with that in mind, trying to make him as durable as possible uh, is the key. There's a number of things that you can do. The first thing that, that I've done for in this new list that I've proposed is the craft world. I've gone for a way foresight of the damned here. Roll a d6 each time model this attribute loses a wound. On a 6 that wound is ignored. If a model has a similar ability, uh, for example the Hemlock Ray Fighter, Spirit Stones or the Farseer's Ghost Town ability, you can choose which ability to use when a model loses a wound but you can't use both. So it just means 24 wounds. All of those wounds you're going to be rolling dice. Every time you get a 6 you're ignoring the wound that comes through. So, and that's, it says a wound, so that's going to be mortal wounds and regular wounds. I found that really helpful, number of times, I've taken 8 wounds in total from like a uh, Lehman Ross or something, rolled up the dice and got 2 or 3 sixes, and just negating that damage from coming through, so that all helps uh, to keep them alive. If you average it out, if it's 24 wounds, and there's one chance in 6 of getting a 6, you can pretty much, uh, on average, you're going to save yourself 4 wounds. So he becomes a 24 wound model, but turns into a 28 wound model in reality. That all stacks up and helps him out to try and keep him alive. That's the key. Another option you can go for if you have the command points during the game is there is a stratagem now as well. It's two command points, it's quite expensive. Tears of Isha. Uh, use a stratagem at the start of your turn. Select a Wraith construct, which is him. That model immediately regains D3 wounds. So, or D3 lost wounds. So you can regain lost wounds as well. And if you've got the points, you can do it every turn if you've taken damage, but there may be a critical point where you're just below a damage bracket and you need a couple of wounds restored, and you can actually do it. You can actually play that. Uh, D3 your extra wounds. If you're already bad, you could come on reroll it. I'll try and give yourself the best chance to get two or three wounds back, at least. And uh, that can really help, especially if you're just below a uh, damage bracket. Or if you've got points to burn, then just keep repairing him, making him stronger as the game goes on. Another option is to try and keep him in cover, obscure behind a building. Remember, it's you don't have to line up the actual guns now. It's just a part of the model sees the target. So you could hide, just have the head uh, appearing from behind a, a, a mountain or a rocky outcrop or a building, and just gain yourself that cover, which is going to make you save a 2 plus save. And that really helps out as well. Um, so a LAS cannon hit comes through, minus 3. Instead of being 6s to save in the open, be 5s and 6s. That just helps. Uh, restrict the damage coming through uh, on him as well. Yeah, the fact that he is a fire magnet, you, I've often found in games, it means that your opponent directs pretty much all their firepower at him and then doesn't shoot other stuff. So he's great for being a, a major distraction and if your opponent fails to destroy him, he's still there to fire and the rest of your army is pretty much intact as well. So I've found that's happened a number of times. So yes, he does attract loads of firepower and yes, he does take damage, but the opponent's firing at that instead of something else. And also, your opponent's going to be struggling. Instead of firing his heavy weapons at toughness 7, toughness 6, toughness 5 targets, he's trying to deal with a toughness 8 target with a decent armor save. And so, there's more failures coming through, more failures to wound, and so on. So, that's another thing to consider. Yes, he does attract damage, but the opponent's going to shoot at something. And so, if he's firing his best stuff at your toughest model, then there's more failures coming through to wound and so on. And so uh, that's, I found that effective as well for preserving other units. The Wraith Knight just is a major distraction. And if the opponent ignores him and goes after other stuff, I mean, you're going to be in trouble with that thing wandering around. Uh, and then because it's 24 wounds, if you don't deal with it early and your firepower starts to dwindle as the game goes on, he becomes more and more difficult to destroy and becomes more and more powerful the longer he stays alive. So really it's making the opponent just uh, making it as hard as possible for the opponent to destroy this thing. Other tactic I used the other day was keeping him out of range. Uh, we played a hammer and anvil game. I just put him right at the very back behind a hillside. Game started uh, nicely out of range, and then uh, when I needed him, 
12 inches brought him right up into range ready to fire so that's another trick that you can use just stay out of range of, of firepower and so that can help uh, keep him out of trouble as well there's a, a couple of other enhancements you can do uh, so you can play fortune here from your runes of fate for psychic powers you have a psychic nearby uh, a farseer for example fortune has a warp charge value of seven so it's quite straightforward to make that go off. If manifested, choose a friendly Asriani unit within 24 of the Psyker, so you can free to choose him. To your next Psychic phase, whenever that unit suffers a wound, so any type of wound, roll a d6 and a 5 plus, that wound is ignored. So that's one third of your damage now coming through, just ignoring it. And for, a, for a, a, a model with loads of wounds, that really helps. Uh, you know, so he takes 10 wounds, you can end up ignoring three of them. Uh, if he, so... <laughs> I think that's really good. Takes 12 wounds, end up ignoring four of them on average, or you could roll really well. If unit already has an ability of a similar effect, aloof ways foresight, the damned attribute, or avatar of Kane's molten body, the effect of fortune replaces that of the ability. So you can't stack it up, you can't roll six pluses, then five pluses, you've got to choose which one. Uh, but I usually go for aloof way just as that as a backup, you know, if the psychic power doesn't go off, for example, and then uh, that is an option uh, just to give them a further enhancement as well. And you know, as you stack these things, all these little bits that help out, the ability to repair, uh, the hiding behind a bit of cover, staying out of range, uh, granting fortune, or aloof weight option, it all helps just to increase the likelihood of him surviving and the more effort it is for your opponent to try and bring this thing down. Now, there's something else here that's not in the codex and that's to take uh, a bone seer. It was suggested to me on uh, by one of the subscribers, and uh, it's a model that's available from Games Workshop. It's not a Forge World model. Uh, the rules are out there for it, uh, but he has an ability. It's a psyker. You can cast one power turn. No smite plus one other for the elder. So you could give him fortune, for example. He's 70 points, and uh, it's one of the old Games Workshop models. But there are, there are rules for him now, currently, and uh, instead of using a psychic power each turn. You can instead choose to heal a Wraith Construct model and you restore D3 wounds. So, you have this little guy nearby and as the damage comes through, it's, and it's automatic, it's not a psychic power, you don't grow up for it, it's just D3 wounds restored every time. And if you combine that with your stratagem, you know, it's potentially 2 D3 wounds restored, so between 2 and 6 wounds restored on this thing each turn, uh, if you want to use command points on that. And it all just pushes the wounds up, so you uh, you're hard to damage in the first place, then you're negating some of the damage as it comes through, and then you're restoring some of the damage uh, that's caused as well. And when all that's totaled up, it just really amplifies uh, the Wraith Knight. You know, I think you've paid the points for him, so you just do as many tricks as you can to try and keep him alive. You know, two of them in an army, they're expensive. You know, two of those, that's half your points used up for a 2,000 point army. So I, I have one of them, and then uh, it's disheartening when he's destroyed, so try and keep him alive uh, for as long as possible. So, uh, I'm going to line up a situation in just a moment. There's a couple of bits I wanted to cover though. So, uh, the other key is those weapons to make sure they hit their target. So, you can go for some psychic powers to help out. Guide, that is walk charge value of 7. If manifested, choose a friendly SCR in a unit within 24. You can reroll failed hit rolls in its ranged weapon. So, 3 plus rerolling is very, very accurate indeed. And then you can also play. Uh, Doom as well. And you can stack these up, you know, if you can, m multiple options. So, warp charge value of 7, enemy unit within 24, reroll failed wound rolls. So you could be on 3s rerolling to hit, 2s rerolling to wound. You know, very, very accurate. It's all about getting those hits and wounds coming through, making sure uh, that you stand a chance of causing trouble. So, you can do it that way. At the other option, which is what I use for the Wraith Knight, is to take an Autark and have him nearby and use Path of Command. You can reroll found or reroll hit rolls of one for friendly craft world units within six of this model. So three plus to hit, rerolling ones is usually pretty accurate. Uh, and it's just a, a nice bubble bit of bonus there that you're able to get from the Autark. So there's that just to try and make sure those hits come through. There's nothing worse than when you're all four shots to get three ones or something and just when you need a decent bit of firepower so trying to increase the accuracy is another key aspect as well for the Wraith Knight so, so we'll say that we've got the Altark nearby 
And so we're on, that's how I usually play it. Freeze to hit re-rolling ones. They've all hit this time. This tank's in big trouble. This is a really good round. You're not rolling. The great thing about these is it's assault two. It's not. It's no D three. I wonder how many shots or D six. I wonder how many shots I'm going to get. You know how many shots you're going to get from this thing. Two's to wound, and they've all wounded. This is a good example here. It's minus four. It's four D six damage, and I think this tank's going to survive. But seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, it's got one wound left. Now it's that's not a particularly good roll. This tank's is wrecked. It's crippled here in major trouble. Do another round of shooting here. So there's your ones. Usually that's a disaster when, or not disaster, but it's usually bad when that happens. But with your all type nearby, generating another hit. Twos for wounds. Yeah, so it's going to be 3d6 damage. See, the twos for wounds really helps out. And again, it's a poor roll, but eight wounds. And again, tanks in massive trouble having taken eight wounds. With only three wounds left. We'll do one more. They've all hit this time. Nice and accurate. Uh, they've all wounded except one. And then 3d6 damage this time. That's better. 14 wounds, tanks destroyed. So we've we've just rolled up three examples there, and each time it's done really well. Uh, crippling a tank, severely damaging it, damaging it, and then uh, a kill. And so uh, you can imagine three tanks dealt with that way. That's an efficient use of points. You know, if you if he's firing at main battle tanks, you know, 200 point models in the game, he's killing two or three of them. Then he's going to earn his points back. So uh, I, I rate him. I think he's decent enough. Tactically as well, I, I think the best way to use him, because he's so flexible, you think, all oh, right, yes, I'm gonna, uh, well, if you wanna keep him alive longer, you keep him back uh, and fire from range. Then when the coast is clear, I'm thinking move out, keep firing, because you, as you move, it's not gonna affect your uh, accuracy. Keep the all nearby, perhaps, uh, to improve the accuracy there, to keep rolling, re-rolling those ones. But remember, he has that ability to shoot at one target and then charge into something else. Imagine the havoc that he can cause if he's in amongst uh, the, the opponent's force. Firing at one target, charging into another. Next turn, firing into another target, charging into another. You know, you're getting two, op two options instead of just the one. If you just do shooting, you can fire at one target and deal with it. But if you're shooting and charging, you know, you can double, potentially double your effectiveness. And with the fists and the feet fighting, he'll cause trouble against vehicles and monsters and so on as well. So I mean, I'm not expecting him to uh, destroy the tank, but let's say with the fists here, gets his hits, be on freeze to wound, six is to try and save these, and then you're on d6 damage. Well, that's, a, that's a shocking roll, but your average from that is gonna be about nine. So again, gonna cause massive trouble for that tank. Um, so that's an option there. You've got the feet option, so you could fire at a heavy vehicle, whatever, right? You know, it could be miles away, it could be just uh, 24 inches away, fire at one target, and then just charge into something that's close by. Charge into an infantry unit, space marine unit, for example. Charge into them. So he's even more deadly when he's able to shoot and charge. But you've got to weigh it up. To do that, he's got to be close to the opponent, and if he's close, there's more danger of being shot at by melters and plasma and so on. So sometimes it's worth hanging back that limits the amount of fire pellets that can be directed against you. Then maybe when the coast is clear for a mopping up action later on, you can move out 12 and start firing and charging in against targets as well. And it is deadly. Towards the end of the game, if this thing's alive and he's bearing down on the opponent's deployment zone and the opponent doesn't have too much left, it's a very scary thing, especially if he's in good uh, form and uh, he's not taking too much damage. So... That's the showcase uh, video here for the Wraith Knight and then the, the tactical uh, analysis here as well. I rolled off a few scenarios to illustrate how he's uh, to be used. This is how I plan to use him here. It's this configuration here. I'm very happy with it. It's performed well in the games that we've played. I've had filmed some new games of the Elder. I'm not going to give away uh, what the results are. They will be available on uh, the channel here, on the regular channel, and then on the Plus channel as well. So keep a lookout for those battle reports. If you want to see the new list, check out the Plus channel for that. Uh, and then you can even leave your own comments and feedback and help shape and form uh, this brand new Eldar list that's on the way. Uh, but uh, Rafe Knight, big fan of him. Leave your own comments and feedback. Uh, what configuration do you go for? Any other strategies, tips and tactics, especially if you're an experienced Eldar player and you've been using the new codex and then that will really help out those who are thinking of perhaps collecting Eldar or are new uh, to collecting Eldar. They can read the comments and I'll read them as well. It's great to share tactics and tips 
uh, with fellow Eldar players. So there it is, that's the video. Keep a look out for more Tactica for the Eldar. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.